Welcome to the Gamma Project. My name is Justin McGuire, and I have you with me today, Lawrence Fontaine from Salus Gym in London. Welcome, Lawrence. Hello, Justin. How are Thank you, you for getting me up at this time of day. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Good uh, AM start for you. you know, early yeah. Early the work. Exactly. So, so, so let's go into let's go let's 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 go straight into us, shall we? Uh, and how we've come about this little interaction here. Now, do you, you want to do it? Let's 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 introduce a little bit what the Gamma Project is about. Yeah, I know you do it better. I think. Um, well, in terms of the Gamma Project, uh, so we started off the Gamma Project a few months back, and the Gamma Project is uh, a very cool um, new online service that takes into account individual biological markers develop a daily strategy towards training and diet. And so just as though your environment might change, you know, you might get some bad news from your boss saying you got to work overtime on the weekend, which is mm. rockets your cortisol because your girlfriend just made plans to go and watch a theater production. Um, <laughs> change in accordance, you know, there's no point trying to push through a brick wall if you have nothing to give. So, Gamma Project takes into account like biological markers that give us a good idea of what you can handle and what kind of nutrition you should take or consume to better adapt to stress. And now, on stress. We, go on, Karen. Now we both kind of bonded, didn't we, over uh, over using stress to man man manipulate people's body composition and lives. But we, well, you here have taken this to a completely whole new level, um, making it a day-to-day -day reaction um, to to your stress. Now, for me, uh, it's it, I've had an incredible experience experiencing already. Um, as, as both um, someone who's putting this into practice and someone who's experiencing it for, experiencing it for myself, um, I've never found it so fucking easy, <laughs> pardon my French, um, to, to, to get into shape, um, manipulate the way I feel and the way I perceive the world and have an abundance of energy and passion for every day-to-day -day mundane things, you know, thing I'm excited to go into the world. Um, so I think like, you know, I think originally you went into this for about, you know, helping people with body composition, but actually the side effects of doing what you're doing, of, of being reactive to your stress um, and having you on board and having that accountability means that we can, one, stay on point and two, only ever push ourselves to what we are capable at that very point in time. But boy, do we push ourselves sometimes. <laughs> it's good. I know we do. I think um, uh, you, you touched on a very important note. You know, more often than not, especially in this industry where it's focused on go, go, go. It's focused on the extreme. Um, I, I definitely know from personal experience that I've pushed myself past boundaries you know, more than one occasion. Uh, which has led me to make bad decisions personally uh, as well as professionally over, over the last uh, few years. Which also, which is why, well, this was such a big motivation for me to research more in depth behind the chemical processes, the biochemical processes as to what can lead your neurology astray, um, what can cause you to become somewhat distant or uh, un unrelated to your normal personal character. Yeah, and, and let's get this straight. These, these effect on your neurology it doesn't just happen overnight. We don't just do one hard session and, we, and then we go a bit like a bit crazy and make a few bad decisions. This is a process that's slowly grinding you down all the time. And then because we really want this, because we want the, you know, the ideal body, we keep pushing and pushing. And what we don't realize, these, these habits and practices or poor sleep or our reaction or perception of things has changed over time and we, it's then become normalized and what we are now doing, well, I'm now doing with my clients and you're doing with me and you're doing to yourself is unraveling that damage, you know, you know, bringing that all back. And what we don't realize sometimes is, especially trainers, because we all think we're superhuman, 
is that the actual, the actual impact that we've had on ourselves, our mentality is being detrimental and I think for a lot of trainers who have achieved what they've achieved they'll look back and go maybe that wasn't worth it at the time I know I know for, for me for example I've sacrificed a lot uh, in 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 the aim to get the ideal physique but what I didn't what we didn't really what I didn't realize till now is it, it's completely not needed no it's not I think um, the biggest thing that's actually needed in life is balance Yes. But yes. one is balance when you're living in a state of chaos. So perception is a big thing. If you don't have the ability to be aware and present in your environment, it doesn't matter how many good intentions you may have, you will always veer to making the wrong choices. Exactly. And those choices at the time may seem very important to make, but in the long in the grand scheme of things, they weren't necessary in the first place. However, in the wrong state of perception or the wrong state of reality, shall we say, uh, we unfortunately uh, can become quite distant from ourselves. Uh, and this is to do with everything from body composition uh, to personal business goals or um, just personal goals, you know, whether or not you have a fanatic that likes to run multiple of marathons throughout the year, or you have a bodybuilder that wants to do 10 shows in a year, the detriment that that has on their personal life and their professional life uh, eventually does show. And it's time and time again where you see seen top level performing athletes, as soon as they come off of their, their podium, as per se, um, they generally are faced with a lot of obstacles in life because they don't know how to integrate back into a balanced state of being. Mm. And this is where the Gamma Project came to... Um, to be really effective in not only my life, but everybody else's life that I'm helping, is that instead of just taking on the subjective idea of who you are and where you are, we obviously take into that into account. It's important to know how you're feeling, but we also take into account objective parameters that can give you a little bit more insight as to why your neurology might be shifting, of course. Now, I, I, I think you must have seen this pattern at the moment with the fitness industry. There's there's this idea that the extremes and the measure of success is weighed in blood, sweat, and tears. We have uh, uh, like you know the hardest hit sessions for an hour, and people pushing themselves to uh, extremes. I think what uh, there was this one Les Mills class called Grit. It's like a, a, an hour intense uh, resistance training. Now, for the majority of people in their lives, we've all, been, all, all already got too much stress. Uh, both you and myself have been a victim to this. And, and we're fit and healthy now. Imagine a scenario when you put in, you know, we've both seen it ourselves, a, a lawyer who's working 50 hours a week, mm -hmm. and they, they do work at home. Uh, and then they're, they're faced with this idea that they need to get in shape, so they want to do it the way they've run the rest of their lives which is to, to, the, to, the, max, to the max degree. Um, and, and now this has become a selling point, which is ridiculous. It, the, the, you causing harm to yourself has become a selling point, Personal. almost like a, self, a way of self-torture to, uh, to justify your bad behavior or or the guilt from being out of shape it, it, it's it's been ridiculous and this is where the industry needs a, a massive shake up it needs to change i mean you we both last night had a conversation about what we we're going to talk about today and we just went crazy about um the transformation pro the the, the 12 week transformation project and how uh, how it, how extreme it is but everyone sold this idea that that's the perfect way to do things but uh it, it really isn't the best way the best analogy that i can use to describe a consensus or an idea that's currently out there is 12 weeks is a module is a single module in a degree program now if you are going to go all out on one module study to uh, to the early hours of the morning every single day, deprive yourself of a social life, what is the likelihood that you're able 
to continue on that degree for the next four years. Mm. It's likely that you're not going to, because you're not going to be motivated, that's for sure, because it's just too depriving of everything else that's actually warranted in life. Um, and secondly, it's not fulfilling, because you're just bombarded by getting through the process rather than being a part of the process, which comes once again back to state of presence. Uh, a lack of presence equals a state of complete stress. And when you're living in a state of stress, you're living in a state of survival. And life's not just about surviving, it's about thriving. And we need to understand as to how we can create a better balance within ourselves, chemically, with the food that we eat, with the activity that we do, to allow for a better neurology for our brain and our bodies to connect so that we're actually able to see the beauty around us, firstly. So appreciation can only come from presence. You cannot appreciate what you have unless you are in a state of presence. And you cannot be in a state of presence if you're in a state of stress. So this economics idea that the industry currently has about all or nothing, and yeah. not even just in the fitness industry, it's actually in the global society. If you look at how social media uh, basically highlights and um, glor glorifies uh, people that are professing, I wake up four in the morning, I grind harder than everybody else. That's why I'm successful. Well, people that are saying these things, I've gone to loaded motivational videos because uh, I went through a time in my life where I was an extremely hard low point, probably the lowest point I've ever been in, and I had to get myself out of that. And I looked to strategies in order to allow myself to become more present in my reality. And through that, I got to watching a lot of motivational videos. And a lot of these guys I didn't resonate with. Um, and the reason why I didn't resonate with them is because the guy who was telling me, I wake up four in the morning, I'm on Instagram all the time. I do more than the next <laughs> girl. The look on his face. Yeah. There's yeah. Also, there was never one smile. Uh, there was no serotonin in his eyes. It looked as though he was a beaten piece of meat. And I think so many people go through life being a beaten piece of meat to the butcher of society. And I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think if you stay, if we change our perception by the right, <coughs> the right type of process, we go a long way to um, creating a better mindset of who we are. Now let's, 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 let's take that point uh, and apply it to a situation we're in at the moment now we're talking about mindset and perception now we have done a collaboration on um, two journalists from the metro um and one girl uh, i don't we'll, we'll leave the name out the the female the female reporter came to us saying she wanted to get in shape now, uh, you know, I, my uh, tool of measurement is the uh, metabolic analysis, you know, Charles Poliquin's bioprint, which is fairly accurate. And this girl comes back at, what was it, 15.3%? 15, 15 yeah. Now, because of the stress, because of the torment that she puts on herself four to five times a week, she doesn't have the ability to see her own beauty she perceives herself as fat not because she is she has uh, some of the lowest body fat i've seen around on on, on a female you know of, of the general public but her perception of herself and the world is completely skewed by the stress and punishment that life and also this new method of training puts on you and this is where everything needs to be undone and the guilt I think that's, uh, that's the biggest thing that drives people, right? It's the it's associated guilt that you, how you perceive yourself compared to, to something else, something else out there. And what people don't realize is when you see someone that has a great body uh, on social media, or whether you read a business weekly or finance weekly, and you see a guy that's been successful in his business, they highlight the best points of that person's life. They don't highlight the journey. And people only see the outcome of a lot of failures uh, to get to the point of having some successes. And they think to themselves, I just know you need to focus on the successes. They only see the person's success. And when they start to fail themselves, 
or perceived level of failure, they don't realize that everything everybody else accomplished, anybody accomplished anything worthwhile in this world, went through a process of failure. They didn't, you weren't born and then came out into this world and had a trophy handed to you for an accomplishment. You had to work for it. But guess what? When you work for something, sometimes you fall flat on your backside. And people don't like that because failure is not something that's accepted nowadays, uh, especially with social media and the perception that people have of their bodies. You know, if a woman has a period and she's slightly inflamed from her hormonal uh, fluctuations, that's not perceived as being acceptable because women always have to look sexy. Or if a man, you know, is, uh, is going through depression, um, uh, it's not perceived as, uh, as acceptable because a man should be tough and should be able to endure the hardships of life. Otherwise, he's got estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> like everything from emotion, uh, emotional state of being to a physical state of presence, um, is being indoctrinated uh, toward uh, a norm. Like, what, we, what is the norm? Like, who may come up with this idea that that is the norm? I think where the shift or the paradigm needs to shift toward is that a norm should be based on a state of mental happiness. And happiness is not euphoria, running around and like, you know, seeing yes. it's, it's, it's the day to day. And that's, that's how I start a lot of the, the, the processes of transformation. Is this, account, is, this, is this question to yourself? How do you honestly feel? You know, not what's on your social media, not what you're telling everyone. What, how do you honestly feel? Yeah. You have to tackle that question amongst other things before you can start to think about transforming yourself, both mentally and, and physically. You know, if you're talking about social media, you know, I think it's really easy when we're constantly looking at filtered pictures of ourselves to imprint that vision on ourselves. But the underlying, the underlying situation still stands. It's, st it's still there. You still, you know, well, I, 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 this, this is a big subject, but um, it, it, like you say, it's about being honest with yourself and then being reattached to your body and your own real life, not one that we um, expose other people to. Completely. I think, I don't know about you, Lawrence, but if I had to ask you a question, all the mistakes that you've ever made in your life. Uh, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> when you made those mistakes, were you completely aware of who you were as a person and the fact that what your choices would have had and how they would have had an uh, implication on those around you or to yourself in the long run. Or generally when you made a decision out of haste due to perceived ideas or due to uh, a amount of personal stress that you put on yourself towards accomplishing some great feat that was never your own to begin with. I don't know. For me, um, the best decisions I ever made in life were not the decisions where I focused purely on my own accomplishment, but rather focused on being a part of something more real and whole, like a community. And being a part of a community, doing something good for someone else, and in turn, doing a lot of good for myself. The points where nowadays we become so engrossed in, in uh, and become so intrinsic into ourselves and our own image that we forget that we're, we're not living in our own world, but we're living in the world. Um, I think bad decisions are generally made in life when we overwhelm ourselves with too much activity. Um, and along with the vanity obsession. You know, the outcome of a good lifestyle is a good body. But a good lifestyle shouldn't be for the purpose of getting a good body. That's just one of the symptoms. A good it should life, be a side effect. Exactly. The good body should be a side effect of your health, both mentally and physically. 
completely. And I think like you can take that over into all areas of life, you know, whether it's being a parent or whether it's being um, a good employee or a good business owner. It's not about the payday. It's not about getting through the end of the day when the kid stops crying. It's about the process that you need to understand that what you're doing has value, not the outcome. Mm. And what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're focusing your effort on to do? I think that's where sometimes people get lost and it's so easy to get lost. I know I have got lost with that. And, and the, way, the way I talk to you about clients is it's, it's like if you're focused on the end game, it can really change your perception of the time that it takes to get there. It's like waiting for a bus in the cold. It's like you're focusing on the journey and not, you know, no, that's a bad example. But like, you know, you can, you can do two journeys. You can take a long time and enjoy it and you can take a short time and it'd be a little bit miserable. Now, it's actually the perception of that time that's important because that sh shorter, you know, say it's 60 minutes less, but the, the journey's a bit miserable, can seem overwhelmingly long compared to the longer journey that you focus on having a pleasant and healthy and good life. I, the journey is beautiful. And it's that perception of time that's really key when, you, when, when people come in and they're like, I wanna do this in 12 weeks, you're like, okay, cool. But you know, you could do it in slightly more time and still have a really good quality of life. I think you know, it would be a great, a great way to approach any transformation is that you approach a transformation that you want to change each day. You don't just want to change the outcome. That you come to, you come to a professional and don't get me wrong, any professional out there is just trying to change their day just as much as you are. But I think when minds come together and help one another out to be able to have a better idea of what you want for each day, when you can change your mindset to having a good day every day, and I don't mean that you don't have down moments. We all go through points in our life where we have a little bit of doubt within ourselves or a little bit of resentment towards past memories, whatever. But it's about moving past that and understand that you don't have to be stuck in that moment and you don't have to be stuck in the future either, but rather appreciate the present. And I think that's what you're talking about right now is that the journey can seem completely miserable if you're just focusing on the end. And um, more often than not, people push so hard to get to the end that when they do eventually get there, they look back and they realize that they lost so much time. And there's one thing you can't get back, and that's time. We can always make money, we can always get a six pack, but you cannot get time back. And it's the most valuable and precious asset that we have in this life to completely value. And I mean that, a completely value, the smallest and simplest things. Like taking the time when you start your day and just to see the colors around you, simplicity behind that and how beautiful it is to be able to even see, let alone the other senses which you've been given. Um, and just appreciating the small things. You know, there was something that, um, uh, uh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, Wayne W. Dyer, who passed away last year. And he's one of the motivation speakers who I uh, asked here to close to talk. And he said something that really stuck with me uh, two months ago. He said, you have been given everything. You were born perfect. Your creation is a complete miracle. And he's right. You know, it takes one in four billionth of a chance for a sperm to impregnate an egg. One in four billion. You have more of a chance of winning the lotto than being born. The distance from our planet from the sun is just the right in mathematical equations to sustain life. In essence, life is perfect. The only thing that isn't is our perception. And he was saying, you know, if you cannot appreciate everything that you have in life, it doesn't matter where you are in your life, whether or not you're born into the most affluent family or you're born in a favela in Brazil or a squatter camp in Africa. But if you cannot appreciate 
what you already have now, no matter where you are in life, then why would life give you anything more to have to handle? Because when you get things in life, when you get opportunities or you have relationships brought to you or a materialistic gain, it is actually a burden to have to carry them. Because it means you have to take more responsibility in caring for these gifts that have been given to you. And if you cannot care for the most simplistic gift that's been given to you, why would life want to give you any more? And I think is when we can change our perception to appreciate who we are, where we are, and what we are for everything, the good and the bad, only then can we make better decisions to veer closer towards the good that we like within ourselves. And then eating healthy becomes easy. Then becoming more physically active becomes more easy because it doesn't become a hindrance on the opposite of what you currently are in your life. Now, if you currently are a person that is negatively assessing everything that you do, including your body image, and you see the only way out to get away from that thinking is to exercise, yeah. exercise becomes another burden. Exercise becomes another burden. It doesn't become a pleasure. And you know what? Human beings are creatures that are always going to veer closer towards pleasures. Like we don't like pain. All right. we're, we're not, we're a little bit. Every now and again. <laughs> but if you cause a painful environment within your existence, it's not going to last. And more importantly, you're not going to live. You're just going to exist. So I think it's very, very important that with this client that we mentioned, it's so common because not only her, but so many other female and male. And it's very important to distinguish that because a lot of, this is something else that I don't like about the industry, is that there's a differentiation between the sexes or a differentiation uh, between the age, the different age groups. And you know what, we're all human beings. We all have emotions and we all have a perceived idea of what we want for ourselves. And because that is a constant feature, it doesn't matter if you're a man or if you're a woman, if you allow society's influence to impact you, then you are going to be burdened with a huge degree of insecurity, which is what we've seen now with this client in the beginning. I, I, I think it's, more, it's probably more popular than ever. It, it's, it's the failure to perceive yourself how you really are it's that simple so you know we've we we both actually we both coincidentally have similar methods to to starting out um but how in your opinion how do we begin then to unravel it how do we begin to unravel the damage that we've done from so much sustained pressure and stress that we put on ourselves you take yourself out of that environment and I'm not saying you have to move, move to another city. I'm not saying you have to quit your job. I'm not saying you have to change your mindset. The way in which you start your day. That's, that's the start of your environment. Let's understand something. Your environment is not just the physical presence within a room. Your environment lies here. It's how you exist in here. That's your real environment. How do you change that? Positive reinforcement rather than negative reinforcement of yourself wake up in the morning and highlight the things that you most love about the day or highlight the things that you most like about yourself. Highlight the things that you are going to accomplish today and be confident in that. Listen to a motivational video. Tony Robbins and Wayne W. Dyer, I highly recommend. They're fantastic because that's the time of the day where our subconscious is influenceable to change. And when you change the subconscious, you change how your everyday thought will be for the rest of the day. And throughout that, you're going to get caught up. There are going to be moments where you're going to get frustrated, you're going to be in traffic, you're going to be like, ah, oh, that damn beep, 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 beep. That's going to happen. However, when you know that you have a conscious, you have a conscious understanding that you are doing something, 
that's when you start to have power given back to you. Because when you do those things, you'll eventually catch yourself. And you'll say, even after having said that, you say, no, Justin, there's no reason to react that way. It's not going to help the situation. Or no, this lady, there's no reason to not feel good about myself just because some other girl has a bigger set of glutes than me. <laughs> it's a puppy dog. Something as superficial as that though, is actually eating up people's minds. The size of someone's ass or the depth of someone's abs. You know what? It looks great in the picture, but it doesn't do any good for one's life. What does do good for one's life is feeling confident and positive within oneself. So that's how we start is by changing your environment, changing how you start your day. But this, this, your environment is, is, is very, da uh, very personal to your practice in the day. When I think about changing the environment in my head, I think of it as sort of a, a multi-pronged attack. So, you know, we talk about, you know, the motivational speaking, uh, we talk about, um, justifying things in your in your head but there's there's varying different angles that we can take to build a more i hate the i fucking hate the word but more of a positive mental attitude um and and a lot of that comes from what we rate so highly is amazing sleep because we know we know we know uh the, because the detrimental effects of, of poor sleep cycles and how that grinds you down, especially as, as trainers and me, for example, I, before, before choosing this life, I chose a life of partying and hedonism. Um, well, I, I wouldn't go to sleep for days. Um, and the impact that has on your psyche is, is immense. And, and again, that doesn't just roll in overnight, that rolls in over, you know, potentially a decade. And now we're seeing, I, feel, I know you see it as much as I do, is that I'm a personal trainer, but why have I all of a sudden had to deal and become a, a, a specialized in solving depression and anxiety? And now that for me starts with re-education. And while you will think it's some sort of course or qualification, I just want you to re-educate yourself on how to sleep. Now, for, for most people, it's like, you sleep fine. I was like, no. <laughs> no, you don't. You've just completely normalized the, the, the fact that you wake up two or three times in the night or that you're grubby or that it takes you uh, an hour to, to cognitively function at a level where you can enjoy life. Completely. And I think when it comes to sleep, to reestablishing sleep, we need to reestablish our diets. First and foremost, I think, you know, the reason why people don't sleep very well is the fact that their blood sugar um, just, just becomes mismanaged. And through like, blood sugar, the reason why I utilize blood sugar, not just fasting, but blood sugar um, in my online service, is because it's probably one of the most direct and simple means to measure a response throughout the immune system, throughout the neuro neurology, and the subsequent effect it will have on the endocrine system as well not to mention digestion, which is paramount to getting and forming better sleep. So what do we have in the modern day world? Most of the clients we see, they'll have breakfast, if you're lucky. Um, they may go throughout the day drinking loads of Starbucks, having a few candy bars, bags of crisps or sandwiches with white bread loaded with gluten, which is highly neurotoxic, causing more brain fog than anything else. And then they get to the evening, and because they haven't eaten very well throughout the day, their stress hormone levels are so elevated that they bench, and they consume a high, huge load of calories from foods that haven't got much nutrient density. And nutrient density is what gives you the raw material towards better forming neurotransmitters to balance sleep. So, you create an environment where you're living off of stimulants. You are suppressing the effects of stimulants with food that has no nutritional value to put you into a temporary coma of which eventually your body wakes up to and says, hey, 
time to feed me again. Three times a night, restless, hungry, wound up. Yeah. yeah. And I think when people put themselves, they start the day in this state and they lack what we, you talked about then, you lack the raw materials for your neurotransmitter. Essentially, you're lacking the raw materials to be happy. We're then in, the, in, we're then in a state of, we're then in a state of, you know, semi low level depression, but we, we, we're looking then, we're looking for some sort of happiness, we're just looking for some sort of release. And that then comes in the food of short, uh, <laughs> that then comes in uh, looking for short term gratification now, in most cases, that's going to be food. It's like, you know, it's super emotional, but with the reward system that we've set in our society, we, you know, we're never going to reach for, you know, uh, uh, a sweet potato and some veg or something that's actually going to um, use, uh, actually going to be able to be utilized in, in giving the brain some uh, glucose that we need. But we, we reach in for these high fats, high sugar foods that, Yes, they solve that short-term gratification, but in the long term, they're they're destructive. And then you have the other people that you know may hold out. They 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 resist, 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 resist a bit longer, and this uh, lack of happiness then results in extreme escapism. And for me, I know that I was a victim of that for years, resulting in, in drug use alcohol use or even bigger binge eating so what people don't realize is this these little day-to-day -day practices they're really setting themselves up for for failure and, and and that's that's where we need to focus on where this multi-pronged attack that you talked about focusing on little bits where the components slowly come together no we don't no, i think you'll agree you don't have to start perfectly no, no, I think um, if you try to start perfectly, you're going to fail. Yeah. The 180 degree turn is a huge turn to make. And unless you are a professionally experienced driver, you're going to crash. Mm -hmm. yeah. are professional or experienced drivers in the race called life. None of us are. I don't care who you are. <laughs> None of us realize or know what's going to come next. The only person that may do, the only person that's an entity is God, that may have an idea of what might be coming next, or goddess, or whatever your beliefs might be. However, as a human being, you don't. Um, trying to change your life around completely, you're just setting yourself up to fail. Making the small little changes, however, um, are easier to manage. It's easier to take a 10 degree turn than 180. So make 18 10 degree turns and then you'll be able to sustain that 180 degree turn for the rest of your life and one way in which you can do that is by actually just eating more consistently making sure you feel your body throughout the day and drinking more water i think those two things just those two simple things mm. can make huge impact on a person's life yeah, because if we're talking about reducing stress so that stress isn't overriding our cognitive thought process and causing us to force us into a direction of habits that are detrimental to our life and health, what's, what, what would you say are the basics for you? Where, can we, where, where should we begin? What are the first, let's say, four points for reducing, reducing stress? with very little impact on our lives. Firstly, wake up in the morning and drink a liter of water before you do anything else. And if you're very daring, put some lemon in that water. Now, why? So for every molecule of glucose that we release into our bodies through glycogen stores, which is stored in the muscle cells and in the liver, we release three molecules of water. So when you are dehydrated, particularly in the morning, after having gone to sleep for eight hours, and hopefully you stay asleep for eight hours, you're waking up in a state of health dehydration. So what does your body do? It releases stress hormone, which mobilizes glycogen in your cells into glucose, into your bloodstream, to rehydrate your body. So if you really want to take a grasp on stress, the first thing to do, hydrate yourself first thing in the morning. 
The lemon helps with vitamin C. Vitamin C is also a great vitamin that helps detoxification, catecholamines. So with increased detoxification, increased hydration, reduced need for stress hormone, you have a winner. Step one. Step two comes down to what you're going to do before you go to bed. Now, awesome. Lawrence here, he's wearing a sexy pair of blue light blocker glasses. Now, these are actually my, my own glasses. These aren't them. Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. These are actually my, these are my nice glasses. Um, I wear these every day. But you, you are right, I do wear blue blockers. Now, blue light blockers help to block off artificial blue light that comes from our iPhones, computer screens, tablets, the basic crux and addiction of the modern day world, technology, which causes an overstimulus of pituitary gland. Now, when we overstimulate pituitary gland, we also lower production of melatonin, which will have a subsequent effect on our serotonin production as well. Not to mention how that impact has on sleep. So by utilizing things like blue light blockers before you go to bed, even if you have to work in the evening, and I understand a lot of people have to answer emails because unfortunately the modern day world doesn't allow us to switch off anymore. It's always go, go, go. Wearing a pair of blue light blockers goes a long way toward reestablishing healthier pituitary function, which has an impact on the pineal gland re-establishing re healthy circadian rhythm as well. Oh. So that's the second thing. The third thing I would say is cut back on the amount of additives you put into your food. So things like iodized salt. Don't use iodized salt, use pink Himalayan rock salt. Now this is, this is something actually that's played a massive role in helping me balance my uh, blood sugars and lower my stress. Can you go into a little bit more detail of course. about this? Because it's really, it's, it's been really key for, for my transformation personally. So sodium is very much needed for uh, neuron activity. Um, it allows the cells to become more polarized and basically become hyper, a bit more excited uh, for more conductivity from our brain to our body. But as with anything else, an abundance of anything that might be good for you can become detrimental. Now, when you have a high level of glucose, fasting glucose in the morning, it's generally a sign of heightened levels of excitation neurotransmitters and stress hormone within the brain, within the body, the neurotransmitters in the brain. Now, by reducing the value of added sodium, I'm not talking about the sodium that's naturally found in food, because that's healthy for you to a certain point, but added sodium. Instead of putting loads of salt on your meat or loads of salt on your potatoes to make it taste better, utilizing things like pepper or chili as an alternative. Pepper, uh, pepper is fantastic, also to be an anti inflammatory if you're not having an allergy to it. But by reducing the volume of sodium intake, you actually reduce the amount of excitation to the brain, which allows you to be in a better state of calm. And presence to your environment. It allows your muscles also to become less hypertonic, which means excessively toned. So reducing the sodium, and I'm not saying sodium is entirely bad, it's good for it in small quantities. However, in the modern day diet, because of flavor and taste, most food is overloaded with sodium. So reducing the level of sodium helps you reestablish a better balance behind your neurology toward a better sequence within your physiology. Um, what would we think about the usual practice of people wanting to get into shape and, and then, but still in a highly stressed situation, about them reducing their calories massively? So let's talk about, you know, calories. Is that, well, I already know the answer to this, but I'm, I'm, we're trying to highlight something really important here. The manipulation of calories and the connection with stress on your body. 
where is the right place to start? So, this is a very big topic to cover, uh, to cover in detail, but in for the brief, you have to be very careful with this. Um, most people under it, rather than contrary to what they may think, uh, I think a lot of people associate with the fact that they have a burger in the evening or a pizza in the evening, but they feel like they're eating too much, but they forget to acknowledge the fact that they eat nothing throughout the day, or very little for that matter. Now, with every, generally, if a person hasn't had much stimulation of their digestion and the gastrointestinal tract, what they would normally find is that they have an impaired ability to stimulate and metabolize nutrients effectively. I was, I was a big fan of that. Big Sorry. fan of that word. Uh, nutrient assimilation, and this is what's key, really, isn't it? It is. Nutrient assimilation is vital. Like, if your digestive system is impaired and you're just not stimulating activity of digestive enzymes and you're bombarding your body with too much food, you're going to cause bacterial overgrowth, unwanted bacterial overgrowth. And that has massive impact on the immune system, not to mention the immune system. So, it's very important to slowly introduce more calories into a person's diet. And how do we go about doing that without causing a negative impact on one's state of bacteria health or gut health? You do it by small incremental intake of meals. So, you know, the old school bodybuilders, uh, actually, well, still current school bodybuilders, eat six, seven meals a day. You know what the reason is why they do that? I always baffled me. I always thought of myself, it was so I can get that many, that many calories in. But you know what the actual reason is? Yes, they're obviously trying to get more nutrients. But you know what the biggest reason is? What would you think that reason is in your art? I, I think it would just be strenuous, uh, breaking down that much food for the good. Bodybuilders, fitness models, athletes train a hell of a lot which means they release an abundance of stress hormone throughout the day. Now, if you're gonna get a bodybuilder or any athlete to sit down and eat a huge meal, they're more than likely not gonna be able to assimilate that meal very well because stress yeah. hormone inhibits gastrin and gastrin is primarily responsible for activation of digestive enzymes. So the reason why they spread the meals throughout the day is because their training volume is so high, which means their stress volume is so high, and they need to cope with assimilating nutrients effectively without overwhelming bacterial overgrowth. That's why they have small incremental meals throughout the day. It's, it's something that I always say is it's not what you eat, it's what you utilize that counts. Completely. Completely. You, you can, I, I eat, I'm 125 kilograms. I eat 3,000 calories a day. That's me. Um, I've gone through points in my life where I've eaten five, 8,000 calories for this purpose of getting bigger. Oh, the old school, you know, economic <laughs> physiology. It doesn't work. It's a waste of time and a waste of money, a huge waste of money. It doesn't work. You do not need an abundance of calories to get bigger. You need a calorie surplus, yes, over your activity level, yes, 100%. However, if you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to grow muscle and you're spending more than 40 minutes in the gym during weight training and you're not assisted, even if you are assisted, if there are guys out there that are, and you do more than an hour and 20 minutes a day of weight training, you're not going to grow. You're going to go into an uncontrolled catabolic state. Now, I must remember, muscle growth comes down to controlled catabolism, not uncontrolled. So too much training is not good for you. Now, if you train that much, if you're not constantly moving, you're taking rest periods between the sets, and your maximum amount of set might be 60 seconds of tension, which is, frankly, nothing in comparison to a lot of professional athletes and how they perform. You're not going to be burning an abundance of calories to warrant eating five, 8,000 calories a day. So this is the reason why when these guys do utilize these huge calories approaches, they'll utilize exogenous hormones like insulin to help the simulation of the nutrients because their body just couldn't do it on their own. Which, yeah. in all fairness, is completely moronic because the effects of insulin that they have not only on the brain but the heart and the entire 
um, physiology. No aging. If you want to prematurely age yourself, start to use exogenous insulin. That's the quickest way of creating an environment for cancer growth, an environment for neurological decay, an environment for cardiovascular health and increased cholesterol. Go ahead and use exogenous insulin. So let's veer away from that. <laughs> let's go to a healthy alternative. Eating smaller quantities of calories, but still giving you enough of a surplus considering your activity level. By making sure those calories come from nutrient-dense source of food will lead to growth, will lead to fat loss. It's not the calorie necessary that counts, it's the nutrient behind the calorie that has more of an important role in physiology. So, so that's really beautiful. Go on. So the first really thing you need to do <laughs> sorry, <laughs> carry on. First thing you need to do is reduce stress. And how do we reduce stress? We provide the body with enough exposure of yeah. energy by food to not warrant the release of stress that mobilizes energy stored within ourselves. So if you don't eat enough and your brain needs glucose to function because it cannot store glucose, okay? This is why we have blood sugar, optimal brain function. If you're not eating regularly, and your body doesn't have a good baseline of blood sugar available for brain function, it's going to cause a release of stress hormone. And that stress hormone is going to cause a release of glycogen in your cells. It also creates process gluconeogenesis, which breaks down muscle tissue, maybe fat tissue if you're lucky, for the purpose of mobilizing sugar into your bloodstream. Now, it's all good and well, but that causes more stress hormone release. And the biggest impact that people have is poor stress control in today's world. Oh, exactly. So increasing the amount of calories gradually in line with how you can assimilate those calories through your digestion will equate to less stress hormone need because there's more available energy and a healthier mind and a better um, operating digestive system. Yeah, and this is exactly where we started the uh, female journalist stuff for the Metro, isn't it? It was a consideration of one, her having enough, enough calories, and two, her being highly stressed. Now, there's a really good point that whilst having a slightly amount of elevated calories, some would fear that and fear that they're actually going to put on weight. But the reality of the situation is that slightly elevated blood sugar will cause a decrease in stress perception. Now that's decreasing stress perception will allow for uh, less dominance of the sympathetic nervous system and a better circadian rhythm, a better sleep cycle, which then regulates fat burning hormones. So actually uh, uh, the, you know, this idea of uh, full control over calories in versus calories out is not is a, a, a slight bit of illusion and you actually have to look a little bit deeper into that and, and start the process of a transformation with the de-stressing of the brain. Let's call it a transformation of the psyche, a transformation of the mind in order to be able to expose your potential to increase stress on, on the body. Yeah, true. true. Decreased calories. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly it. Is that any any program um, or anything in life you're exposed to stress in life? And this is take, exercise. Exercise is a form of stress. But when you're exposed to stress in life, uh, it's dependent on the volume of the stress, whether or not it's going to be beneficial or detrimental. Right. So if you're exposed mm -hmm. to enough stress, which challenges you, you'll be able to learn from it and be able to devise a strategy toward accomplishment or adaptation, positive adaptation. If you're exposed to too much stress, too much training, too much heavy loads, not enough control, rushing, what's going to happen? Your body's going to decay. Your mind's going to decay. You're going to make poorer choices. Poorer choices in a scenario of body transformation, bad dietary habits, opting for the Mars bar instead of the blueberries. Mm. 
going for consistency instead of a glass of water. All right. So stress is beneficial if it is imposed within the right parameters. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that is what we are trying to achieve with, with uh, the Gamma Project. I almost said Omega Project, like we usually do that. The, the Gamma Project is about, it's not about decreasing too much or increasing too much, but it's about the exact perfect amount of stress to cause a positive change, a positive reaction to your body, where the side effect of that is you look fucking amazing. Uh, but like we said, that's simply a side effect. It's a side effect, you feel amazing. You don't just look uh, the, feel amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this, that, but that's almost secondary. And like when I started, the, the, this is my most, the best point I think, when I started this, this project with you, when you asked me to try this out, I was focused on one objective, which was to be as shredded as possible. Now my objective has completely changed to maintain this level of cognitive function, to maintain this level of happiness. Because I wake up every single day excited to take on the same problems that I had before, but now they're not a problem, now they are a challenge. And I have everything in place that I need to be able to take on those challenges. So it's, it's really interesting how take, 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 the overstimulation of stress out and that small amount of stress can create an environment where you're hungry for success. Yeah. But you're also enjoying the process of, of tackling it. Yeah. You it's, it's you become an artist of, of life. You know, you don't become a, a slave to it. Um, you, you, you take your canvas and the opportunities of so-called challenges or um, challenges. That, I like that word. It's a good word. Challenge. It's a challenge. It's, it's not. It's not an obligation or hindrance. Um, a challenge. You take those challenges and you construct uh, a great artwork out of your life because you're able to utilize all uh, the paint brushes or the paints in the right format to actually get the result you want from your life. And I think when it comes back, if we just take a step back to the lady that we're helping from the metro. Um, I know that you were doing a lot of stretching, a lot of yoga-based training, a lot of meditation technique, alongside increasing the calories gradually to the point where you should be able to assimilate more calories. Now, apart from reducing the amount of stress hormone release, you're also reducing the amount of muscle tension. Now, how important is that? Well, you cannot contract muscle if you cannot lengthen it first. If I can't stretch my bicep, then there would be no opportunity for me to shorten it once again. If my bicep's like this the whole time, how would I? Well, you wait for this opportunity the whole time, where you just to, just to show off your guns. <laughs> uh, how would I be able to lengthen a muscle if a muscle is in a state of stress? And the body is generally in a state of stress. So why people have pain, neck pain, knee pain, back pain? you name it, wrist pain, elbow pain, is because their bodies are so excited due to the volume of stress hormone release and the instability of electrolytes within their systems because of the stress hormone release, that they don't have the opportunity to actually have a body transformation in the first place. Exactly. So rushing straight in for that 12 week, it falls out crazy. <laughs> I think, 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 just think, lay the foundations, lay the foundations, take a step back to go forward with ease, pick a different journey, pick, that's the fucking message here, pick, just pick a, pick a slightly different journey, it's going to be a lot more nicer cruise down those country roads than sitting in fucking traffic on the motorway the whole time, uh, and that's all that's going to happen by trying to rush this and it's actually a beautiful, it's a, it's a time where you can really, you know, when we're not drinking so much and we're eating healthy, it's a time we can really focus on the things that matter to us. And that's what people forget. It's time to spend, it's time to spend 
with your loved ones, time to spend with your family, time to spend with your children, because we've, we've put less emphasis on the, 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 the short-term gratification, that short-term gratification of going out and the, uh, the, big, the big binges. I think, it, I think, you know, I encourage anyone who's uh, in the UK to follow along with this process in the Metro because, uh, God, it makes, it makes life fun again. It's gonna make life a dollar. I, I, haven't, seen, I haven't seen Miranda stop smiling. Any all those people, uh, I don't know if I even should mention them, but I think it's fine. Um, the fo- all the photos on the, you know, on the treadmills and stuff and them two tackling the day together, it's, it's all smiles. Yeah. I think one of the things that stuck with me the most was I would follow this physique model and she said she gave the possibly the worst bit of advice I've ever heard. She said, anytime I'm hungry, I just pinch myself <laughs> to, to remind me of what I, would be, I, I should be trying to achieve. Physi- I, I physically harm myself and now to a, to a degree, this is what people are doing by restricting uh, the love of life is they're, they're causing both mental and physical harm to themselves so that they I implore people to, to follow and find a different direction, find one that brings uh, sustained results, as you always like to say, happiness, and as a plus, look amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, looking good is not hard. Yeah. Everybody has anatomy, everybody has muscles, and generally, unless you are a mutant, your muscles are going to be positioned in a very similar place to the next person on your skeletal system, right? So if you move, if you're able to move your muscle and you're able to reduce tension and increase tension by having a nice neutral balance point to start with, you're gonna look good. You are gonna burn fat. You are gonna have that six pack. You can have those shoulders or whatever it is that you want. It's just a question of if you, it's frustration. If you're too frustrated with yourself, you're building up a sense of regret, a sense of um, complete, undue tension within the body. And too much tension, too much stress is not going to create an environment for change. It isn't. Because you're fighting a losing battle. You're trying to hit a brick wall with a soft little hand of yours. (laughs) Doesn't matter if you're. I don't care if you're a martial arts expert, this wall is made of steel. You're not gonna break through it. Rather, allow that steel to heat up, put it in the sun, do some yoga, do some stretching, give it a little bit extra food, and guess what? The steel will start to bend. And then you have an environment where you can actually transform the way your body looks, but also the way in which your mind thinks. So let's 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 wrap this up by nailing the, the the key the key points here. Let's let's revisit some of those. So we know for this first two week period, we need to sort of reset um, in terms of our body, in terms of returning to a, a center point, and we don't do that from excessive anything. Um, our training. I know you you like to do a little bit from the start, but I like to work basically from a, a base of yin, mm-hmm. uh, especially with our society. So yin yoga, normal yoga, stretching. Um, this is a fucking fantastic way to reduce the total volume of stress in your life. Like you said, um, nut- um, hydration, and the, the, the one of the keys to um, modulating your stress. So easy. So easy. It is underlooked, and the most simple strategy to take is just yeah. to start drinking more water, for sure. Then we've got nutrient dense food, but an abundance of not starving yourself mm-hmm. and not overeating, but an abundance of nutrients that are going to feed both every chemical in your body, every neurotransmitter that you need for a sustained and healthy, healthy and happy transformation. Um, obviously trying to cut out the major free, the gluten, the wheat and the dairy, because we will go into that in further detail in future, but uh, there is one way to take a bit massive shit in your own brain is, is to flood your body with um, 
with gluten. And dairy. Um, and, da and dairy. It's, um, I think those two and, right there are, are definite podcasts on their own. Yeah, definite podcasts on their own. So the commercial effects. People, people, are, people are like, I'm, I'm sure there's people sitting here now going, but I want, I want results now. Well, let's 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 talk about this. It's uh, the reduction of for the male guy, George. The reduction of body fat from four, uh, 29.9 to 24.5 percent, which is massive, with very little work. And Miranda, uh, the female journalist, a, a, an amazing drop. And you know how hard it is to drop from uh, the lo the lower the lo at the lower end of the scale. She, Going from what was it? Uh, a fifteen point three to thirteen point five, was it? Fifteen, fifteen, doing nothing and enjoying it on the way. Um, so, takeaway points is distress to move forward, uh, and just give yourself a little bit of love. Um, stop, stop killing yourself. I think is the key. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a healthy process. No, it most definitely isn't. Uh, it, you know, it's just, at any again, it's detrimental. Uh, if you can just reservice your car, you know, the, the car being your body and your mind, and you put a better set of pistons and you do an oil change and you soup it up with a new turbo, and the turbo isn't that it goes all out, that of which knows when to exchange gas for a better combustion to occur in the engine. All right? Just change the way in which your body functions. And the best way of doing that is by feeding it and by stretching. <laughs> Funny enough, by stretching. And let's get this clear. All these changes that we, let's use this example, all these changes are done standing still. You know, before, before we take on the journey, before we make that, you know, it's all done beforehand. It's, um, it's again, setting the foundations. But even this foundation needs to be revisited more often yeah. in the process because the process is just a cherry on top of the cake. You know, it, it's the fire that ignites the wood. But you know, if that wood is just dampened by too much, too much bull of either food or too much training, or whatever it might be, guess what? You're not going to have a big, huge bonfire then the night. You're going to be left in the cold. <laughs> so, Establishing the fact that recovery comes through not pushing hard, but being mindful and actually down, uh, down gearing or sh down shifting your gears to a point where you can actually handle. Yes, yes, exactly. When it's required, but you can't always accelerate. So right. even when you are at the point where you can handle more stress, it doesn't always mean that you're going to be able to handle that stress for a continual period of time. There will be points where things don't go right. There will be points where you will catch something. Something happens to you personally that throws you off. And at those points, going back to the foundation again and doing the core that allows you better balance, that's gonna make a difference. I think, that's, so that's, I think that's something we should revisit now. I know you use the the physiological biomarkers, but there's also messages that your body tells you. And I think maybe that's something we should go into detail in next time. Realizing that your body's telling you to fucking slow down. <laughs> and the key, the key signs, I think that's, if, if people realized and were in tune with their, with their bodies and listen to the signals that they're, it's telling them, they might make better progress. And I think that might be a topic for our next conversation. Yeah, I think, our next conversation, we should definitely touch on that. And um, I think we should just slowly touch on what type of parameters we need to consider in terms of total training time in the week and what kind of balance one should have behind that training time, whether it be stretching, whether it be weight training, whether it be steady state cardio, within those individual parameters. And um, yeah. I think that's a good uh, topic of discussion to have next time. And we can take into account pre-exercise uh, you know, history, uh, whether someone has been trained or not trained, male or female, um, symptoms or issues. But we'll touch on that next time around. We're basically going to cover every little bit of advice that you need, people out there. So please stay tuned. 
Um, I really enjoyed this. This was our first one. And um, I'm, I'm excited to do the next now. What time is it here? I think it's quarter past seven your time. That's 7.15 our time, so we've got to get on with our days. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, I, uh, you know, drop, drop them and we're happy to answer. Um, Justin, anything, any final thoughts? No, I think the final thoughts are just like we are summing up once again. Um, drink more water. Yes. We increase your calories and stretch. Just all of those three things. And um, you're setting yourself up for a good base point. If you have any other questions, do you want to ask me, Lawrence? Um, if you want to drop the email, my email is justin at hulkenterprisesltd.com. And Lawrence, your email? Uh, mine's lawrence at salislondon.com. Uh, S-A-L-U-S, london.com. Uh, lawrence spelled with a U. Uh, more than happy to answer um, anytime. Awesome. Likewise, guys. Have a good day out there. I uh, hope it was informative. If anything else that you guys may want to know or learn about, just drop it into the text comment and we're more than happy to oblige. Lawrence, thanks a lot, bud. Have a good day. You too, brother. Bye.